Mercedes-Benz have a long history of coupe, so it wasn't a surprise when they revealed the W124 series in coupe form at the 1987 Geneva Motor Show, exactly 10 years after the previous 123 series coupe debuted. The W124 series coupes are based on the floor pan of the four-door, but the wheelbase and overall length were 85mm shorter, and the commonality with the saloon was just limited to the front end, up to the A-pillars, the tail lights, and the dashboard. The most significant change was in June 1993, with this modified radiator grille, which was much more integrated and with a narrower chrome surround. The front orange indicators were replaced by clear units and the rear tail lamps were also changed. So welcome to Lot 76 Cars, my name's Simon and this time I'm with a subscriber Kevin who's going to tell us about this lovely C124. Kevin, tell us how long you've had this fabulous car. Uh, four years now. Right. Use it every day, it's my daily driver, um, it's never let me down. It's fantastic. It's a blue, blue black, isn't it? One nine nine. Yeah. So I'll probably catch on to this somewhere, somewhere uh, in the video as well. But this was an expensive car back in the day. I looked the price up, and and you, it's about forty five thousand pounds. You were saying something like that, or even more. Yeah, yeah. One brand new, um, fully spec'd up, and where the average house price was sixty thousand. So it's you really wanted to have one. Right. So you've done some quite expensive work, and I'll, I'll cut into the the video and show the uh, show the viewers some of the work you've actually done. But you've spent quite a bit on getting this car absolutely where you want it for a daily driver, haven't you? I still got work to do, but um, you know, from what I'm spending on it, it still makes sense because I believe the car is still worth, um, you know, the, the amount of money that it owes me. So I'm still happy to keep throwing money at her it's cheaper than leasing or having a loan to buy a, an e-class um and i'd much rather be driving this than a yeah and in fact the, and in fact that the point i suppose most people make the depreciation on on a brand new vehicle or the monthly lease payments will be way more than than you put into actually keeping this um keeping probably this on the before road. lockdown but uh, I think new cars now are going up with the shortage of them. That's right. Um, so now might be a good time, but still the answer's no. I'll still now you're a, you're a serial owner of, of C124s. This is not your first. There's a story behind how you're into your second one already, aren't you, at least? Um, I fell in love with the C124. My parents had one in Portugal. Oh, wow, okay. And I used to go out there and I used to drive around in their one. Um, and came back to England and thought, right, I'm going to have one myself. Right. And I bought a pre-facelift, 1993, okay. uh, with a full AMG body kit right. and Aero 1 alloys, which just ticked every box for me. And this is a post-facelift car, isn't it? This, this is, one this is. Later one, yeah. yeah. Um, but my earlier one got written off, unfortunately. Um and then I bought a 219 CLS, okay, uh, 320 diesel, and just didn't get on with it. I did not like a more modern car, um, so I sold that for a profit, and then I was offered this and snapped it up. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. We're going to uh, drive this car at some stage as well, which we is good, and have a look around in a bit more detail. So thanks for telling us about the car. Thank you very much. Cheers. No worries. So now we're going to have the opportunity to drive this E320 from 1995. The seatbelt butler is very kindly handed me the uh, seatbelt, which is uh, very kind. So it makes it a lot easier to uh, to put that on because, of course, there is no B pillar in this car. So the seatbelt is mounted much further back. That's fantastic. As I say, it's from 1995. Very expensive car back in the day. Um, in fact, more expensive than an equivalent 4-litre XGS Celebration, according to an old copy of Autocar that was uh, hanging around at home. So we're going to try and experience what it's like with six cylinders. So I've only previously driven the four-cylinder Mercedes, so uh, let's see how this one goes. So we've got a familiar gearbox to me, uh, this Mercedes unit. You've got Standard, and you've also got Economy, not Sport, uh, as somebody once said. 
and then effectively two, three, four, and obviously the normal ratios, park, reverse, drive, neutral. Uh, let's put it into drive and let's see how we get on. So we're going to um, head uh, out on the road now. So the car picks up really well. This was the later engine that superseded the um, 300 and the 24 valve unit car, literally merged into one and they became this 320 engine. So the smoothness of the six cylinder is, is clearly a revelation for me after just driving the four cylinder Mercs. So it's a really, really comfortable car. This one's had a lowered suspension and larger wheels, which you'll, have, uh, you'll see, I'll try and cut those into the video. But um, in actual fact, it hasn't harmed the ride quality too much. And certainly some would say with the aesthetics, they've done a pretty good job. Now, they built something like 2.6 million of these uh, W124 series chassis cars but just about 140,000, I'll put the exact number on screen, of the coupes. These are relatively rare cars. You don't actually see that many of these around. And like the only Kevin, our subscriber Kevin's mentioned, you do tend to get some uh, admiring looks with this particular vehicle. This one's finished in the lovely blue black. So it's, it's one of those colors that resists the issue of having a, a black car and all the problems of keeping it clean because it, it doesn't actually look too bad in uh, in most weathers being a slightly um, a plain metallic shade so let's see how this car picks up and the answer is just turbine turbine smooth and obviously a wave of torque but uh, something I'm, I'm not i'm not used to for sure so we're going to head out to uh, some to get a bit more speed up some slightly faster roads. So let's see how it goes up some dual carriageway onto the dual carriageway, foot down and it it kicks down. Wow! It, it really goes something to back off a little bit here, in fact. So this wood rimmed. Uh, steering wheel feels nice it's an airbag one and on my own car airbags will pretty much be going standard at this stage and although it's a big steering wheel i think maybe something like uh, 40 centimeters 41 centimeters diameter it doesn't actually feel out of place in this car and this lovely wood effect uh, finish it makes it a really nice wheel to hold now the one big benefit of this pillarless coupe is not only these fantastic looks but actually the over the shoulder vision is really really good so you're joining a major road i hadn't really noticed that and, until now but that's uh, that's really really good and this uh, lovely beige leather interior joseph lloyd would be uh, would be hankering after this car i'm sure this one's got 179,700 miles on and honestly it could have 9,700 miles on it, it doesn't feel saggy doesn't feel baggy now the only Kevin's done a, a huge amount of work to this car and basically I think because it's in everyday use that's one of the reasons that he's uh, he's managed to um, to keep it ticking over so well it's maintained properly but it's also used properly we've not picked the best weather today to come and film a car review but the uh, single mono wiper blade that extends into the corners is uh, is doing its job and clearing the screen very effectively for us and like many Mercedes of this era, the dials are really clear. You've got the uh, temperature display. You've got the oil pressure, which is really good and healthy on this one, right to the top, like my own car. Uh, fuel gauge, um, speedo tachometer, a rev counter, and a clock. And that's about it. And that's all you need. But they're really, really clear to, uh, uh, to see uh, when you're driving. And the one thing I would say about this car is after the 190 W201 series cars, there appears to have been an increase in build quality. So these vehicles were being built at the same time that the new E-Class had already been launched. So I think that was the W210 E-Class had been launched. The coupe continued, I think probably with the estate, and that's why this car's a 95 when the newer car was still on sale as a, as a saloon. I don't think the W124 coupe was directly replaced. Possibly its role was taken by maybe the CLK. 
So one of the points Kevin, the owner, just made to me is quite right. It's a very aerodynamic car. And what's not necessarily apparent, and I'll try and put the clips into the video and overlay them, is the front and rear screens are different angles to the standard W124 chassis. It's not apparent at first, but I think it gives it a CD figure of something like about 0 0.3. I'll, if that's incorrect, I'll, I'll confirm that on screen for you. But um, it does make it a significantly more um, aerodynamic car than its predecessor, the C123 chassis, and a result of that probably a fair bit more economical as well. So driving this car on dual carriageway, you really notice how you could take this on a really long journey. You can imagine this storm in the autobahns and with the level of power that it's got, it certainly is, is not a disappointment to drive. Absolutely not at all. It's uh, everything I expected and more to be honest. So whilst we've got a brief pause in the rain, Kevin's very kindly dropped the windows and you really have got the full sort of semi-convertible effect. We've got a sunroof. Uh, not getting much use out of that today, unfortunately, with the with the weather. But with this pillarless um, coupe, you can see behind over my shoulder. A, it's not only good for vision, but also it gives you sort of 50% uh, of the benefit, I guess, of being in a convertible. You've got that uh, feeling without actually dropping the roof. What a really great design! Not so many pillarless cars, um, coupes that you'd actually find these days either. So just driving down these country lanes, the feel that you've got through the wheel, it's a really chunky wheel, as I mentioned before. There's quite a bit of feel. There's no free play in this car. As I say, you wouldn't, doesn't belay the fact this car's got a, a relatively high mileage, not high for a Mercedes, I guess. And the steering feels really good. So probably things like the uh, suspension, I guess, has been refreshed. Because the suspension is lower, um, in actual fact, it doesn't really ruin the ride quality, uh, surprisingly, although you've got to take speed bumps a bit easier. So like the Mercedes 190, this is a step up in terms of noise, vibration and harshness. It's on a level pretty much, even with the, the, the sunroof open or the windows cracked open a bit today, um, it's on a level with a, with a modern car. You could, as Kevin does, you could drive this car every day, um, because there wouldn't be any compromises, uh, certainly in terms of power and performance. And in terms of refinement, I could imagine taking this car hundreds of miles without, uh, without any problems. So what do I think to my first go in a W124 full stop? Well, it's certainly got echoes of Mercedes 190W201, but I can see certainly from the interior, build quality has gone up a level. This was one of the last of the line cars, um, an E320, so the E-Series uh, badging was actually put on the vehicles. That nomenclature was uh, added at that stage in preparation for the new E-Class. This is a very, very late car, expensive as I mentioned at the time, £45,000 plus. Um, it's quiet in six cylinder form, particularly it's smooth. And in actual fact, surprisingly, it's still pretty quick. Could you live with one day today? Yeah, you probably could in actual fact. Some of the features I like over the shoulder, I like the fact that you've got the ability to drop the uh, side windows completely without the pillar. It's a really pretty car. And I think certainly at the sort of money these are used at the moment, you'd be hard pressed to find something that's uh, that's as much value and as much fun at this price level. So thanks again for watching Lot 76 Cars. Uh, thanks to Kevin, the subscriber, who's uh, very kindly allowed me to drive his car and uh, indulge me and told me all about it today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications to find out when the next video's uh, on. And I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.